Would you look at that? We have finally arrived at Championship Sunday here for the DreamHack Masters Spring 2020, and we've got a big bout on our hands. And I don't mean that just because G2's in the server. G2 taking on big for our first best of five grand final on the European side of things. And then we're going to deep dive off into what is Furia and a Team Liquid that yesterday showed resilience, showed that they had what it takes to win two BO3s back to back. That's the two time. BO3 winners and Team Liquid. They're going to be looking to grab a championship over Furia later on. But first and foremost, I think it's time we kick off the Streamhack Master Spring Championship in the right way. And by doing so, I want to welcome you all here. And right now is the time. Right now is the place. So make sure you're set up real good. Make sure you got everything that you need because we're not stopping anytime soon. Let's get this party on the road. We've got our Sunday's finest on, and I can tell you that because Maniac is also dressed to the nines here. We look at Jacob, he's dressed up just as well and elegantly as he possibly could. And so for me, I've got my tuxedo on, and I hope that's okay. I hope that fits both of you guys. Maniac, Jacob, what are we looking at here today? G2 big, it's a grand final. This is a glorious day, and ultimately what is well, sadly, kind of like in a weird way, my last broadcast day for a while. Yeah, it's going to be the last time some time, Trace. You just save a break, though. You've been working your ass off the past couple of, what is it, three, four months. So uh, enjoy today and enjoy a great game of Counter-Strike. I think Big Clan coming into this one, of course, the underdogs, but the way they've been playing in this tournament so far, hard, uh, hardly, I can say, I guess, that Big Clan are just as big uh, favorites as, as G2. I think if they can show up like they did yesterday, then G2 cannot feel safe at all. Yeah, listen, uh, this is the first Sunday championship at home that I ever live. So I'm kind of in a weird place where I'm <laughs> Hopefully the last excited, one as well. but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in my apartment. We're supposed to be in an arena. We make the best out of it. So my energy is like all up in the air and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing some great counts back. I'm sure we'll have it. Both teams have uh, surprised us very well. This final might not be the one we were expecting, but it's going to be a banger anyway. Yeah, we do have uh, quite a banger, and you say surprises, and I'm sure that this best of five will be full of them. Again, up to this point, it's been best of three, so we also changed the format today, and we start to look at things in a different light. But that doesn't change the results of yesterday. We actually got some of those results. We can begin to go over some of the implications, some of the impact that some of the teams had or didn't have. I want to start with big versus phase. That was a, a good game. That was a close game, especially on Mirage. Nuke was uh, a, a one-man show, dare I say, from the Big Clan. Face Clan, they tried to pull it back. Nico did his best effort with the Deagle right here. But overall, there was no doubt that Big Clan were the better team coming into Mirage Maniac. That was probably one of the best series we've seen so far in this entire tournament. I would say Broki playing some of the best Counter-Strike we have ever seen him play under the face banner, and still it wasn't enough. Shen Terrace clutching left, right, and center. Not only in the clutches, but also in some very crucial rounds. He just had a nice 4K and a 3K in that game so overall I, I think big clan and, and face clan gave us a good match but the best team won yesterday and that was unfortunately for face clan the big guys yeah no. very big guys maniac what you think <laughs> listen what was crazy about this game is that we, we came into it with the storyline that oh the first time big you know they faced face they had prepared they had everything going for them they surprised face even in an interview we heard that from face they were better prepared than us they knew what we were doing they anti strategy us so we're riding the wave of, okay, another BO3, that should be a different story now. There isn't going to be this kind of advantage going into it. Big won't have that crazy preparation, but it didn't change anything. Their map, they completely dismantled phase 16-4. Their T-side was a thing of beauty. Uh, the IGL completely in, in place. One step ahead of phase all the way. Nico could just not find his game outside. I think he was having probably the, a nightmare. Must still have a nightmare right now, this game on Nuke. And then <laughs> Mirage, all up in the air as well. Clutches left and right. And Big, with their resilience, able to close after 2 OT. So. In, in the long lines of surprises brought by Big, 
this was a big one. Yeah, we, we look at Mirage, and if we were to go into detail about it, you're right, Maniac. We're talking about withstanding the test of time, and it was Vig that did it 22-19. And Jacob, for us to look at this series and say, now Big mm. Clan joined G2 in a grand final. Yesterday, did they show you some promise? Yes, I'd say so. I, I'd say so. I think Big Clan are, are playing the best brand of Counter-Strike we've seen Big Clan play so far. I think Tapson is... Is, is performing well under the leadership of him himself, uh, if you can put it that way. I think Shane Harris is starting to to play the the level of Counter Strike that I guess we expected him to do a year ago. It's it's been a rocky start for him within the big clan lineup. He hasn't really been finding any consistency. He's shown glimpses of it, but I think this tournament overall has been one of the first times where we consistently see him play well. The role players within big clan as well, performing stellar season with the AWP, finding entries and, and in general just having a, a very strong presence, especially on the CT sides of, of the game. So overall, I think it's a very well-rounded team and big claim definitely yeah. deserve to be in the grand final yeah and they are and they're there and we're all gonna see it we're all gonna sit back and witness it now let's move forward let's talk a little bit about some of the things that happen over the north american side i'm looking at liquid cloud nine is one of the best uh, uh excuse me one of the first best of threes for liquid in the day and you got to think that premise of hey well we're gonna play multiple times today that plays a little bit of a factor didn't slow liquid down whatsoever they 16 four then 16 12 over cloud nine in their series yeah, that really did not stop them at all, actually. We had a little bit of doubts about Liquid's form. They had shown signs of uncertainties before that last day. And then <laughs> if we had any questions, well, we have all the answers right now because Liquid's are fired up. They're all activated. We've seen crazy performance individually coming in from Elish, for example. Um, they've, they've pretty much dismantled all of their oppositions on their map pick. It's been absolutely insane. The CT sides have been rock solid. Um, T side clutches. If anyone had any doubts for Liquid, well, that's all in the past because they look to be poised to take that trophy. Yeah, just, Jacob. just quick, quickly want to point out Liquid, you know, as you're saying, and Netfly as well playing an, an insane game yesterday. His T side rating was 1.84, and that is incredible tough to produce such a great and competitive T side rating. So Netfly is definitely feeling it as well for the Liquid guys. It's a lot easier when you're not grenading yourself, I'm being told <laughs> here, just through the earpiece. I don't know if it's true, but it does sound factual. Now, if we look at this liquid lineup, we do know that Stewie is now in charge. He's running the ship over mm -hmm. there. And just briefly, let's talk about that. Well, let's talk a little bit about what Stewie2K is bringing to the table in terms of uh, either from a traditional aspect of being a leader in a team sport, or just through the fact that he's now finding himself at the helm of Liquid. You know what, I think one of Stu 2K's greatest asset is his motivation and, and the fire he has within him in order to, to do well. I, I think when he's the in-game leader, the entirety of the team and, and the Liquid players, even the coach Adrian, he probably feels that like you're responsible to show up, you're responsible to do your individual practice because you can. You have a guy who you just feel that's sitting next to you who wants this so badly. I think that is one of the greatest assets you bring into the team. He's the motivator, he's the guy that constantly speaks up and he's the guy that has, you know, the fire within him, I guess, to, to motivate the guys around him. When it comes to the like um, technicalities of being an in-game leader, I don't think Stu 2K is nowhere near uh, a Glaive or you know or some of the other great in-game we have out there. Stu 2K is still new into this role, and I don't think he has to be either. I think Liquid is a team that functions well when they're playing uh, a bit more loose, when they let the guys like Trist, Netfly, Nitro for that matter, do whatever they want and just feel the game out. So I think right now Stu 2K is a, a great in-game leader for Liquid. Whether or not it stays like that for the future and it's a consistent in-game leader for them, not too sure about that, but looking isolated at this tournament, it's probably the best option they have. Yeah, and let's continue to move on down the road here because I think Liquid are going to get a lot of discussion about themselves later. But for us, uh, Maniac, if I say the number 27,360 uh, minutes, that equates roughly to 19 days. Does that sound about right for your quick math? I'll, I'll get your word on that. Let me just get my calculus. No, I'm just kidding. You're probably right. <laughs> no, okay. So it's been 19 days of the DreamHack Masters Spring 2020. We had that nice little 10 day or eight day buffer right there in the beginning. But overall, 19 days have led us up to the point that we're in right now. We can even begin to talk about what some of that means, looking at the A groups and looking at the groups for EU. I think uh, overall, when we take a look at the big picture of the groups, yes, Astralis don't make it out first in their group. Complexity put up a hell of a battle. Then uh, when you look down even further, Fnatic, they slipped a little bit. And then there's that little team Navi that continues to break my heart. Yeah. I mean, in group stage, they did fine. I mean, if we're looking at the uh, the poor teams that end up in the red portions over there, well, you have Mouse Sports. That was a big, big blow for the team. You have Ants as well, who've shown better Counter-Strike in the last week, but that just wasn't enough to make it past the group stage. And you're right, 19 days of Counter-Strike, an ocean of BO3s, an ocean of games. Uh, it's almost hard for me to just navigate through all these images I have. I dream of Counter-Strike. Yeah. I wake up and have Counter-Strike for breakfast, and it's like, it's all over the place. But it was amazing, and I cannot believe it's actually the culmination today. Like, we've, we've gone to the end of it. It's amazing. <laughs> you're, t you're telling me, dude. And, and Jacob, I'm looking at you, and I'm asking, what does Counter-Strike taste like? 
Uh, Counter Strike tastes good, you know. It, it tastes sort of like a a good sausage, you know, with a little bit of cheese in it, bacon in it, maybe, and it's just you know something you can't get enough of, Trace. Why does it have to be a sausage? I don't know. The <laughs> European playoffs. Let's look at the brackets and how things have shaked down for us, at least during the day that we have. Uh, mm. Excuse me, the days when we're watching the tournament here. The brackets along the way. You're going to see FaZe Clan all the way up there till the end, and then none. So 2 0 by Big, and that's going to net themselves not that final G2 versus FaZe. Let's talk a little bit about FaZe Clan in this tournament. Yeah, I think they did well. I think FaZe Clan was the team to be reckoned with, especially considering the, the circumstances coming into it. They uh, recently brought in Bemes to the lineup, a young player, 16 years old, having to implement such a young guy who have never played at a Tier 1 Counter-Strike team ever before, going into a tournament of this caliber and do as well as he's been doing, I think he deserves a lot of credit. So does FaZe Clan. Of course, I don't think they're happy by not being in the final. It's never fun to lose to Big Clan and especially the way they did it yesterday, but they gotta be honest with themselves as well. Yesterday, Big Clan was a much better team and when they played against Navi the other day as well, they were better than Navi. So there's positives and negatives to take away from this one. And overall, I think if FaZe Clan is looking back at this tournament in a few days, they'll be fairly satisfied with how they performed. Yeah, and you know, Maniac, we're going to talk a little bit more about EU. Obviously, we have the big EU final, and I don't mean that in terms of just big being there. I'm talking about everybody's going to be eyes on that best of five. But for North America, we've got a, a similar group of results. And ultimately, to have Liquid in a grand final now, it might not have started off that way. No, absolutely not. If you just look at the left portion of your screen here on Group A, Liquid, it, that is not a typo. That is not a mistake. One win, two losses. So they had a hard time. They really had a tough time in that group stage. They still made it through. Unfortunately, Chaos had to stop the adventure there. And if you look at the Group B, well, that was EG who actually bite the dust. Uh, they couldn't make it past. They couldn't make it to the playoff, leaving Cloud9, Genji, and 100 Thieves going in. Uh, I think 100 Thieves probably quite happy about this tournament. They have been in, in turbulent times. Uh, they've looked slightly better, not enough to make it to the grand final, that said. And then we have to talk about Furia because amidst this gigantic online chaos that is NACS, they are probably the one certainty, I want to say, the one the one team that we know will perform individually on point. Uh, Maple looking great. They have the fire with them. They, they look in a great position for this grand final. But but, you know, I, I'm looking at this, Jacob, and I'm thinking too, let's manage expectations right now because, I, you know, not just from a liquid standpoint, they look like they're hot to trot. And then when you stack these two against each other throughout the playoff brackets at the very end, I'd say we got ourselves a pretty nice grand final for the NA side of things. I would say so too. I mean, Furia have been the best playing team so far in this tournament, without a doubt, but Liquid is, is strongly candidating to that title as well now. Look at the low bracket run they've had. There was no doubt against GNG, they won 2-0. There was no doubt against Cloud9, they won 2-0. And yes, they had a very close first game against Hunter Thieves yesterday, but second game, there was no doubt Liquid won 2-0. So they've been super, super strong performing throughout the lower bracket here. So if I'm Furia, yes, I'm feeling confident. Yes, I still feel Furia have been the more consistent team over the past couple of months, but when Liquid is playing at this level, when guys like Elish is turning up like he did yesterday, Netfly for that matter as well, then it doesn't matter if you call Caserado or you called Art, you're gonna have a struggle no matter what. And it does seem like the entire world loves Money Maniac, which is weirdly enough. I'm not pointing at you, I'm not looking at you, you just I'm okay. or anything. I'm just saying the whole world loves money. And what's more sweeter than a big excuse me, a big prize pool. I almost said a word there, I'd probably get trouble forward. Uh, we're talking about 160,000 over on the EU side of things Ooh. and 100,000 for the NA side of things. So there are sweet prize pots on both sides. That's 260K total. That's pretty nuts, that's pretty awesome. Moreover, the only reason that that's possible are the sponsors here of the DreamHack Master Spring 2020, everybody. That's gonna be Corsair, Monster Energy, Intel, DTS, Betway, and how could we ever ever forget AT&T and all the sourdough that they bring to us. Now, we look forward, we talk a little bit about what's coming up after the break, which is going to be that of G2 versus Big, Furia Liquid later in the day. Today is Championship Sunday, and I think it's time that we get it the hell on with. <laughs> 